Hello and welcome to Parncilia. This is Dresden's Tale, episode 19. I'm your guide, Lewis Nichols, and this is the story where we follow Dresden Fane, the warlock adventurer himself, the love maker, the ant taker. He's a warrior with a cause, fighting for the Stone Clan. All right, that's a that's enough of that business. Uh, when we left off, uh, Dresden had been uh, indeed fighting ants and uh, having some interesting encounters in his love life. Uh, but he's home now. He's back in Parncilia after that uh, short expedi expedition down south. Back in the real world, I haven't uh, gotten past my uh, recording issues. I'm still re-recording a few episodes. Uh, this is one of them. Um, but that's, that's not so bad. Every time I do this, I get a little bit better. Uh, in fact, I think, uh, there'll come a day as I continue to improve that I'll probably end up redoing the entire first season. Now that, that's a long ways off, but, uh, it tells me there's a lot of work here left to be done and there's a lot of material, but that doesn't mean I can't continue to improve the way that I present it. One of my inspirations to start this effort were YouTubers that uh, you could tell their, their first dozen or so uh, uh, videos. They weren't really very good at what they did, uh, but they had a plan, they had an idea, and they had the perseverance to push through. And some of those YouTubers have been uh, producing content for years now, and they've gotten very, very good at their craft. Since the beginning of the internet, it's been kind of a wild west, a big, uh, big expansionist uh, frontier, waiting for people with good ideas and the the willingness to work hard and make those uh, good ideas come to fruition. Just just sitting out there waiting. That's different now than it was back in the the 80s. Things are more developed. Uh, it's not a it's not a fad uh, anymore. It's uh, a huge part of our lives, but there are still niches that uh, can be grabbed up by the common folk. And I uh, salute all the content providers that have uh, done a great job at, at uh, filling that void. And hopefully uh, I can follow through here and be one of those uh, many, many who do. And maybe by the time the, the big boys with bigger budgets uh, move in to take advantage. Maybe I'll be uh, developed enough that uh, you guys won't run off and take on shows with uh, professional voice actors and, you know, best-selling authors. Um, or who knows, maybe, uh, maybe I'll be both by then. <laughs> Probably not, though. So, uh, we find Dresden today. He, uh, we're here in uh, chapter 18 on the fifth day of of Thorsten. It's the last month of summer. Uh, sometimes these, are, these seasons for the adventurers, they wrap up early. There's a lot of warriors still out of town, though, doing uh, their various activities for the year. But not Dresden. He's in the bunkhouse, trying to figure out what to do with himself. Light duty? What am I supposed to do all day? Dresden complained. Since getting back from the farm, he'd only been assigned half days of work in the house wood shop. Mouse scrambled around the barracks chasing some sort of rodent. The antics of the chase were utterly lost on Dresden's sour mind. Ha! The pterodon made a last-ditch dive and pulled the small rat up by a tail. Dropping it into his mouth, he crunched twice and made a satisfied noise that slipped down his gullet. What are you supposed to do? Why not get out there and enjoy yourself? His militia mate had uh, free time as well and had dropped by to visit. Ralph was re beginning to regret his decision. I suppose, but I don't want anyone to think I'm lazy. Dresden lay back on his bunk. They were the only two in the room. Whatever. Mouse stood and started to walk out the door. Thanks for the snack, but... If I wanted to spend my day in a barracks, I have my own. Hold on, I'm coming with you. Fine, but don't be so damn glum. 
Dresden wasn't sure why walking up and down the Great Way markets was any better than sitting in his room. He couldn't uh, couldn't buy or trade for anything here. It was nice and quiet back there. He thought it was the worst possible situation. His master's house had trade agreements with almost everyone, but he was far too low on the scales for it to do him any good, even though he'd done work personally for a great number of the vendors. I built that stall, he told Mouse, and pointed to a seller of breads and fruits. I can tell. It looks like shit, his friend teased. He dropped a few iron coins into the dealer's hand and took a few sweet rolls, handing one to Dresden. An overweight sweets merchant called from the next stand. Little Nanoch, if your master has left you any time for it, I need some work done for shells in the back of the kitchen. Tomorrow, Dresden told him, if he has no plans for me. If I can, it'll be early in the morning. Good enough, the man tossed him a piece of hard candy. Mouse laughed at him. Well, little Nanoch, for a quiet little bastard, you sure know a lot of people. It's a small town, Ralph. The fuck it is. There's 50,000 people in Parncilia. You know them all. Hmm, <laughs> hardly. He thought the number might be closer to 30,000. He didn't think he could recognize more than a few hundred. Fewer would know him. But Mouse didn't know anybody. More importantly, no one knew him. All the ties that bound clansmen together were missing from the Pterodon's life. He never had once seen him gain something through a trade agreement. Yet, he was a Hamul now. It was uh, a lesser house for certain, but they should have had some arrangements. Instead, all he ever saw was coins, coins, coins. It all seemed very cold and impersonal. He bit the rock of hard sweetness. About the Hamals. Fane? Dresden choked as he prematurely swallowed the hard lump of sugar. So much for his curiosity, he knew that booming voice, and it sent trembles down his spine. Dresden and Mouse both turned to see Boreal lumbering towards them. The warrior was barrel-chested as a dwarf and nearly six feet tall. His sparkling green eyes were the only thing remotely feminine about him. You stink-ass vagabond dwarf, come over here! Coming from anyone else, Dresden would have thought it wouldn't have thought it much of a greeting. For the warden, it was damn near cordial. Uh hello, Commander. Didn't know you were back from Odessa. Ha! Like you keep up. And I'm not your damn commander. Ugh, you look like shit. Dresden knew his clothes weren't the best, but he thought they looked better than most. His heavy pants were only three years old, and the holes made for a nice breeze in the summer heat. His wool shirt had been uh, darned a few times, but, well, maybe a dozen times, but it still held some color. Nanoch issues in the month of Simone during the time of man, he told the warden. Huh, wise man, but a warrior must keep up appearances. What's your trade, Rockhead? I can't remember. Dresden felt a bit hurt. Woodworking, sir. Fucking perfect. You lazy, tianist piece of shit. If you have time to fuck around the way, you have time to earn a new set of clothes. Come to the house tomorrow, and my wife will put you to work. He didn't even look at me once, Mouse said after Burrell had stomped off. I don't even think he remembered me. He sure knew you, though. Yeah, lucky me. Now, later in the day, Dresden found some peace and quiet, singing in a nice spot next to the bay. He'd uh, ditched Mouse and avoided any new entanglements, any more chit-chat that might uh, annoy him. And he was uh, thinking about stuff, thinking about his life. He was thinking that the spot he was sitting in he might, uh, might lose pretty soon because a new meeting hall was going up for one of the city work gangs. Time for changing. He uh, thought that even the the look of Parncilia's inhabitants were, was evolving. Wasn't long ago that the human population had been uh, just Gaelics and uh, Pats. The tall, dark-skinned Gaelics and the, the shorter, brown-skinned Pats with their, their curly hair. But now there were so many more. There were 
the humans from Etwine and dwarves too. There were the Narishist from Balestrand. And of course there were the Hessians. Uh, they were supposed to be converted now. They, they'd done their time in the camps and Dresden couldn't pick out any one of them that, you know, was a proven failure, but it, it worried him. You know, things, things were different now. And it wasn't just the humans. You, you had the Jungo Minotaur. Uh, you had uh, Tagara and more shapes and color patterns. And he could, uh, he could even imagine that he could even count. If they truly became converted, that was all well and good, but he was skeptical. He rose and began to walk home. They were problems for the clan elites. Dresden knew he had to rise early. That was his problem tomorrow. He had to help the merchant with his kitchens and then go find out what kind of craziness Burial had planned for him. And that's how uh, chapter 18 wraps down. A little introspection from Dresden. Uh, this is all things that we've, we've talked about from time to time, but I think it's uh, poignant that uh, Dresden tells you himself that, uh, you know, the, the Keld Empire, uh, the, the Stone Clan especially, uh, didn't used to be, you know, particularly, uh, particularly diverse, but now you have this uh, flood of of new clansmen coming in from the uh, from the camps. Um, that's uh, an ongoing theme that we're going to hear a lot. And uh, I guess uh, you've probably already heard enough. I don't need to harp on it too much, but uh, it is something that, that we're going to keep up with through the story. All these uh, conquered peoples who, who now have an opportunity to exist within the, the Keld Empire that but yet, the you know, it's the very same empire that uh, they suffered under uh, as, the, as the invasions of their homelands occurred. Uh, so, this is the part of the story where uh, I ask you to hit the like button and uh, do, do the other stuff too. Uh, every little bit helps, as I, I say over and over again. Um... I have a Patreon page if you are so inclined to contribute directly. Uh, if you want to just uh, keep up with station updates and such, there's the Twitter. Uh, and uh, for uh, Facebook here, you know, if you could subscribe, that would be awesome. There's, uh, you know, you can join the page. Uh, there's a there's a lot of things you can do for me, and even if uh, all you do is listen then that is awesome. Uh, I'm hoping that this show has uh, filled a niche that a lot of people are going to enjoy. Uh, it's a little different than what I've found out there so far. Uh, it's not a very uh, high production project, but uh, I think I'm at least somewhat entertaining. I'm proud of the story I'm presenting here. Uh, and I hope you come back next time to see what uh, see what Boreal has got uh, laid out for Dresden. In the meantime, I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful day.